Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is my review for Ahsoka episode 4. This review will contain major spoilers for Ahsoka episode 4, so if you have not seen the episode, go watch it and then come back and watch this. So yeah, let's just get straight into it in all spoiler details. So, if you've been watching my um, Ahsoka reviews the past three episodes, I thought the first two were okay, but I really, really enjoyed um, the third one. I thought it was very good, I thought it was very entertaining, I thought it was done well, and I actually started to connect with the characters, you know, as someone who hasn't seen Rebels... I already I said in my um my review for the first two episodes that I found it hard to connect to Hera and to Sabine because I didn't know the characters I had I haven't seen Rebels you know I'm not really familiar with it so I didn't know those characters and so it was hard to connect but in episode three I really did feel like I was starting to form like a connection with um Sabine's character and her relationship with Ahsoka during their training scene in the beginning of last episode so I developed more of a connection to these characters so it gets me more engaged in the series so yeah. Um, that's the main reason why I liked last episode. Also, there was some cool action and stuff like that. So yeah, I thought episode 3 was really, really good. And I have to say, I thought this episode was really good as well. I had a really good time in this episode, and I was fully engaged. I, you know, I knew these characters a bit more now. And so, I was able to, you know, fully grasp, you know, the dynamics and the emotions of what's going on without missing something. Like, I understood Sabine's, um, relationship to Ezra. Like, obviously not to the level that someone who had seen, um, Rebels would. But I, I, I had a grasp of it. I understood um, Sabine's relationship with Ezra and why she would make that choice that she does that we'll talk about after. And um, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the episode. I thought it was really well done. I thought the action was cool. Well, the action was great, actually. I'll talk about that. The episode opens with Ahsoka and Sabine trying to fix the ship um, after it's been damaged from last episode during that big space battle. And we get some really um, cool action, like a little bit into the episode, like 10 minutes into the episode, we get some really great action surrounding the ship. I really did enjoy that moment when um, Ho Yang turned off the lights, like, you know, with the, like he cut the power or whatever when he was being attacked by the other droid. And then Sabine was like, oh, that droid just made it worse. And Ahsoka was like, he wouldn't do that. And then goes out the lights, everyone knows that something was going on. I thought that was really cool. Um, I also really enjoyed seeing the droid on droid fight. I thought that was d um, done pretty well. One thing I will say is that the the animation for the um, droids looks a little bit animated, like it wouldn't an animated show. That could be done on purpose because obviously this is like very heavily connected to an animated show. So maybe they're trying to keep the same style. I don't know, but that was one thing. But I did enjoy seeing the um, droid fight. I thought that was cool. I think the lightsaber action in this episode was really great. I think it might have been some of the best we've seen from a Disney Plus series. Or Star Wars Disney Plus series, the last ever action. I thought it was done really well. I thought the CG, the CG looks great. Honestly, this episode, I thought it did. I thought it looked really good. Sometimes in the Disney Plus shows, you can tell that the CG doesn't look very good, but I thought it looked really good. So yeah, um, that was done really well. That last ever fight between um, Shin Hati and uh, what's her name and Sabine, sorry, was really cool. I really did love that moment where she tried to like, well, she didn't try to use the force, but she faked out using the force like calling back to how she can't really do it and then she like puts her fist down and shoots her or shoots the lightsaber out of her hand with the um uh, mandalorian blaster it's a very cool you know contrast between jedi and mandalorian i thought that was really cool and yeah that battle between um ray stevenson's character and i'm forgetting his name raven stevenson's character and ahsoka i thought that was really cool as well i thought it was really engaging and really tense as well and i was not expecting ahsoka to lose in that moment i mean she plummets to what we're supposed to assume is her death i mean I mean, for a show that is called Ahsoka, on episode 4, you wouldn't expect her to die, so I don't think anybody actually thought she died. But still, it was pretty shocking when that happened. Um, but then, obviously, that leads to one of the biggest moments in the episode, and that's where Sabine hands over the maps of Thrawn and Ezra to Ray Stevenson's character. I really liked that moment. I thought it was very well written, and it's very understanding. Like, I understand why she did that, and so it's very, it's very easy to understand her choices in that situation, because of what's been established in the show, in this show especially, not just in Rebels, like you don't have to watch Rebels to know that she and Ezra have a very close relationship. Um, and so that's really good for someone who hasn't seen Rebels, I can still connect. So I understand why she did that, and it's a twist I did not see coming. I really didn't see it coming, I did not think it was gonna happen, I'm very curious to see how this is gonna work out. And also, you notice, Ahsoka's been wary if she can trust Sabine, like to be, to do the right thing. She was telling her during the fight with Ray Stevenson's character, shoot the map, shoot the map destroy, you know, destroy the map, but she couldn't do it, and Ahsoka's been seen, been asking her throughout the episode, and throughout last episode, 
what you know worst comes to worst we will have to destroy the map to make sure that nobody can find Thrawn and she knows that Sabine can't do that you know she's been wary of this and she was right Sabine can't do that but we know why and it's explained very well so I'm excited to see how that turns out next episode with Sabine and Ray Stevenson's character I'm sorry I forgot the name also not to mention when Shin Hati is like choking her after she hands it over I actually thought she was gonna die I was like they're surely not like surely they're not gonna kill her that would have been crazy but yeah, all of this leads to the biggest moment in the episode where Ahsoka is pushed off the cliff and she goes into what is to be assumed to be the afterlife or a point between the afterlife and real life and she sees Anakin. And I don't know if it's a force ghost, I don't know if it's his soul, I have no clue, maybe it's a construct of her mind or she's on the brink of death, I don't know. But Hayden Christensen has returned as Anakin. To what extent, I'm not sure. He'll probably, you know, serve some guidance for Ahsoka or whatever. But yeah, I really am curious to see how this is going to play out. And also, people are making a big deal about this. Like, oh my god, I hate Christian's back as Anakin. But he was back last year in Obi-Wan. I understand Obi-Wan was like a really bad show. So nobody wants to remember that. But like, we saw him last year. Although he does look really, really cool. I love that Revenge of the Sith outfit. It looks great. Um, so yeah, that's it for my review. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Did you enjoy the episode? Did you not? Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helped me out. Turn on post notifications so I don't miss when I upload. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.